again, I'm Sarah with Waterloo Swimming in Austin, Texas, and today we are going to be focusing on helping children learn to back float. Now, depending on your child's age and temperament and feelings about the water, you may want to start with some motivators or rewards to make this experience more positive for everyone involved. Children may experience some fear or stress during this process, and it's important to listen and validate those feelings while maintaining the expectation that they try their best and assuring them that you will be there to keep them safe. In the following video, we'll review some progressive ways to support your child as they grow more confident in their back float and some ways you can keep your back float lesson fun for your little swimmer. Be sure to like and follow so you can see more helpful videos on how to support your child staying safe and active in the water. Here we have a four-year-old swimmer Arden in our Waterloo Learn to Swim program and Arden came in with a lot of sillies for her lesson that day. We were super wiggly, had some strong ideas about what she did and did not want to do in the lesson that day and so it was a really great challenge to figure out how to get her on board with a back float lesson. <laughs> Here she's clearly giving me <laughs> a lot of, of fun and engagement to work with. Um, she's a super high energy kiddo, so I decided to pivot to doing things that she liked. We started with jumps and then tried the back float again. Still was getting a lot of sillies, a lot of wiggles, not a very successful back float. So we went back to something that Arden enjoyed, diving to the bottom for her mermaids and then eventually used those mermaid toys as a great motivator to help her be still in the water. As you can see here, she's got her mermaids in her hands and she is nice and still on that back float and now completely independent. After we were able to meet that demand, I decided to go ahead and lean into what she was giving me that day with all of her energy and work on roll recoveries. So Arden had a great jump out, but we hadn't yet mastered rolling onto her back successfully by herself. We did several different attempts. We still had a lot of wiggles and a lot of water up our nose until finally by her last attempt, she'd gained a lot more confidence and a lot more ability to do that skill independently. So as you can see here, she rolls on her own, finds her back, takes a deep breath and kicks out. Here we have our four-year-old swimmer, Myra, in our uh, Waterloo Learn to Swim program. She came in with a very confident, independent back float from the beginning. Um, her legs sink just a little bit, and she did have a little bit of anxiety trying to figure out how to get out of a back float and find her way around the pool, so that's what we decided to work on today. We started by adjusting her body position and teaching her to kick her legs helping her find some propulsion in those feet and what a steady kick looked like, and then progressing to finding the wall and rolling over. So here we're just working on that progression of getting closer to an edge or a wall and rolling over to find stability. And then here we practice the same technique except out into the water so that we can eventually build on rolling to her back, taking a deep breath and rolling back to her stomach to continue breathing and she does an excellent job. Here we have another four-year-old swimmer, uh, Harris, from our Waterloo program. He came into his class not actually excited about swimming at all. We had a couple of minutes of observation before he decided he wanted to participate and started with some really easy skills that would help him gain some confidence and also utilized Big Brother to give him some encouragement and attention that he was looking for. Once he started to be a little bit more positive about the lesson, giving us some thumbs up, I thought it was a good time to go ahead and try that back float. He um, was giving me some signals that he was ready to give it a shot. But once we attempted the back float, he decided that that was not at all something that he wanted to try. Got pretty upset pretty quickly. I tried to hold the demand with him, but he was continuing to get upset so we switched the demand to a submersion and went back to something that Harris likes to do. He got to pick jumps. We tried that for a little bit to continue to get those wiggles out and help him gain his confidence and build trust with him 
and then we made another attempt at the back float. It was a lot more successful that time. He was much more trusting and stayed in that back float position for a lot longer to the point where he would back float independently as long as I remained nice and close. This is Harris's big brother, Sam. We had to give him a job, so he wanted to help us show some of the back float hand positioning under the water. He also wanted to demonstrate a full and independent back float recovery jump. So you can see him showing off those skills here. Mm -hmm. 